Hi everyone, my name is Hyo Kyokui. I'm a software engineer at NTT Communications, and I'm in charge of developing network provisioning system, especially for transport network, to configure some optical devices like transponder, rodem, and layer to switching network. I'm also a member of DevOps platform team and I'm working on developing Kubernetes-based CACD platform. And now I'm really interested in bringing my knowledge and experiences of Kubernetes and cloud native application development to the modernization of the transport network provisioning system. So these days I'm mainly focusing on developing a new network provisioning system leveraging cloud-native open sources and application deployment practices. Thank you for having me at this great conference. I really appreciate the Open Source Summit Japan community giving me this opportunity to share with you my recent activities about this cloud-native network provision system. Okay, so before we get into the main topic, let me share the scope of this presentation. The network provisioning system I will share with you is one that it receives intent-based high-level network provisioning request from the Northbound API. Then it compiles the request to the actual device config and deploys it to the Southbound devices. It is just focused on the network configuration only and its target is only configuration plane, not control plane. So some topics like config generation from high level intent, declarative configuration and programming, get ups are within the scope of this presentation. But other topics related to SDN control plane, workflow engine or API orchestration to integrate with other systems, monitoring, touch provisioning uh, out of the scope of this presentation. And today's session consists of the following four topics. First, I will share with you the legacy network provisioning system and the practical problems of it. Then I will introduce the cloud native technologies helpful to develop network provisioning systems. And I will show you the brand new network provision system leveraging cloud Kubernetes and some other cloud native open source technologies. And finally, I will show you a demonstration of what I developed. Okay, so let's get into the main session. I will show the following two cases and explain the practical problems we will face at the production level system development, API automation, and Git based continuous delivery. So, first, API automation. These days, most network devices or their management system have REST API to configure them through API automatically without human operation. In addition to that, Ansible modules and Python libraries for network automation are prepared as open source. So thanks to these open technologies, we can develop a network element provisioner relatively easily. The network element provisioner receives an intent-based API request from the northbound, maps it to the actual device config, then sends your request to update device config of the southbound devices. If you want to provide some kind of on-demand network services using the devices and the provisioner, you might need an API orchestrator or a workflow engine to collaborate with other systems like inventory management, accounting, and so on. And in the network element provisioner, in most cases, some kind of configuration store is needed to store northbound service intent and to cache 
the actual device config for data reconciliation, or in some cases for better performance. In my opinion, this is a really simple but the typical basic architecture of the telecom network service. As for entity communications, some products or structures like this architecture. However, you will face some critical problems if you want to develop production quality network services. First, Ansible is a great product but if we want to integrate minor devices or develop complex use cases, there might be no Ansible modules you can use as an out-of-box solution. And you might have to implement network provisioning script from scratch. If you get into transport network application development, it is the cases you are facing. And if you write simple network provisioning script by yourself, you might select text templating like Ginger. Ginger text templating is useful and it is enough when you implement a small use case and the configuration that there are no relationship and dependence between merge requests from northbound. But, uh, you know, if we get into the complex use cases consisting of underlay and over network, lots of BGP connections, your strategy to use text templating will be broken. In addition, if you want to check what is actually provisioned to the network devices, these configurations are generated dynamically by network element provisioning. So you have to invoke get command as a network device directory to see what is actually deployed. And in terms of data sync, configuration drift might be caused in the case that the network operators configure network device directory without using network element provisioner for some troubleshooting or the case that the application version is updated and the mapping logic from the northbound intent to southbound device config is changed. You have to reconcile in such situation when configuration drift occurred. But if you have thousands of interface service orders, the minor data sync or reconciliation is very troublesome. Okay, so let's move on to the next use case. Git and Git repository services are good choices for continuous deployment of infrastructure as a code. Most engines are familiar with Git, Git operation, so it improves developer experience and we can get lots of benefits from the Git-based tools and practices that are elaborated for application development. Even in the network community, almost all engineers know the advantage of Git-based operation. So recently, lots of network operators are eager to introduce Git-based continuous delivery into the network operation using Ansible or Simple Script as a provision and using networks to manage infrastructure that but the Git-based continuous delivery in the network community is a little bit different from the cloud-native GitOps approach. And there are some critical problems in this use case as well. First, if there's no Ansible modules you can use and you choose the simple script and text templating, it is difficult to test whether the generated configuration is correct without deploying it to the actual device. The generated configuration is just a simple text and there are no modules and schema. So you cannot perform any static analysis or any other model based tests like policy check. All you can do is a golden file testing that the reviewer checks the difference between the previous snapshot and the newly generated one. As you know, it is really painful for a reviewer 
to check the overall config updates with his or her eyes and might miss some critical errors. It just depends on the review skill, so it's really painful and we should try to change this situation. Even if the reviewer checks perfectly and there are no errors, unfortunately, the actual mapped config might be different from the CI testing results. There are some reasons for this configuration drift. One is that the management data stored at networks is changed from the one that is used as the CI testing time. And also configuration drift will be occurred when the network element provisioner's application version is different from the one installed in the shared environment. There is another problem. The config mapping logic of the network element provisioner depends on an external system like networks. So if you want to perform a rollback to the previous configuration, it is not enough to perform git checkout to the target revision. It's also needed to restore external service to the corresponding version. The network operation is not close to the Git operation, so operators must ensure the right version of the configuration are deployed to both Git repositories and external services like networks. As for security, this architecture selects the push-based approach so that the all secrets like login password or work credentials are stored as the network element provisioning. As you know, it increases the security risk and should be corrected. I've introduced some problems of the current network provisioning system. So from here, I will explain the cloud native technologies that are helpful to solve these problems. There are lots of great technologies and options in the cloud landscape. Today, I'd like to share these four topics that is especially helpful for development of network provisioning system. As you know, Kubernetes is the most famous container orchestration tool in the world, and it contains excellent mechanisms for automation reconciliation loop and operator pattern. Kubernetes reconciliation loop is engine to converge the actual state of the delivery target infrastructure to the declaratory described manifest by running the procedure implemented in reconciliation repeatedly. All Kubernetes resources are managed by this approach so that Kubernetes has some great features like resiliency and out hearing. In addition, we can extend Kubernetes behavior by implementing custom resource definition and custom controller to manage external application or your own resources without modifying Kubernetes itself. Kubernetes operator patterns ecosystem is growing rapidly, and there are some great approaches to write your own custom operators like KubeBuilder and Operator SDK. Next, GetOps. There are some important principles in GetOps that should be certified. The configurations of the system and the infrastructure must be described declaratively as an infrastructure as a code and system configuration should be deployed when new git commit is pushed or git pull request merged to the main branch. And also the concept of single source of tools is really important for GitOps. Git manifest repository must be single source of tools all configuration data must be aggregated to the manifesto repository. 
and GitOps controllers must support pool-based approach to ensure the configuration that is stored at the single source of tools repository will be deployed as it is without any modifications. And next, Q language. Q is a powerful data configuration language and it has great features that change our legacy practice to handle decorative configurations significantly. The following is a brief overview of Q's features. Q is specialized in data unification. It enables us to unify multiple data in the arbitrary layer. And since Q is commutative and associative, so we can get the same result when performing a composite of multiple data, regardless of the order of evaluation. In terms of types, Q does not distinguish various types and value constraints. Event types and constraints are the kind of value, so the only difference between them is that the types and constraints do not have concrete value. Due to this novel approach, we can declare constraints and schema simply and effectively in the configuration data itself. Q is also highly programmable. It supports software coding practices like templating and module. So we can take the same level of advantages as if we use general proofs language. In addition, you can generate Q type differentials from Go API, OpenAPI, and ProdBuff. So, you know, Q is a use case agnostic language and it can support any data models by generating Q types according to these API schemas. Now, leveraging cloud native technologies I mentioned before and QRank, you can construct the sort of modern CI CD pipeline like this. The declarative described manifest and system configuration is written by Q, and the configurations written in Q have types and schema, so you will be able to perform a static analysis like type validation. In addition to that, you can implement the logic of policy enforcement using Q, so you can perform policy tests in CI as well using Q. You can set up pool based GitOps using Argo CD or Flux CD. It performs pouring of the Git commit of the manifest wrapper. And when it detects changes, the latest Q manifest is compiled to the YAML manifest and then deployed to the Kubernetes cluster. In fact, as of now, Q is not widely used, as far as I know. Customize or Helm is commonly used as configuration tool. But in my opinion, Q has the capability to replace them in the near future. In order to compare this modern shared CD pipeline to the legacy network provisioning system, I have arranged modern shared CD pipeline above and the legacy network provisioning system below. They look similar, but there are some significant difference between them, and the legacy network provision system is behind in some points. As I mentioned before, there is no models and schema in the text templating configuration, so there is no way to perform static analysis except for golden file testing. The configuration data stored in the manifest repo is not single source of tools, so you need an extra operation in addition to running git checkout to execute rollback. And since simple procedure scripts and text templating are included in the delivery flow, 
So it's the modification of the device config by the scripts might cause an error or a configuration drift. And it uses pressure-based approach like SheerOps. So all device secrets are stored at the network element provisioner, which increases security risk. All these issues are critical and should be addressed and we can improve them much better by adapting the cloud native technologies and practice to the network provisioning systems as well, I think. So let me introduce you to what I have created, the new network provision system leveraging cloud native technologies. These are the basic requirements of this new network provisioning system. To improve testability and programmability, I need typed programming of network configuration, not simple text templating. In the network configuration ecosystem, there is a good schema differential language called Yang. So it is better that the type definitions are generated from a young schema automatically. And in addition to the programmability of network provisioning system itself, it is also important to improve the programmability of the northbound application that calls northbound API. In order to achieve this, it's needed to be able to provide an abstract intent-based high-level CRUD API easily and automatically without implementing a detailed merge or deletion strategy. In my opinion, if this provisioning system can expose intent-based high-level CRUD API, it's really helpful for developers of the northbound application since they can perform domain-driven development by using this network provisioning system as a repertory layer of the DDD architecture. In order to achieve auto-generation of the high-level CRUD API, the configuration language must have the ability to perform composite of multiple types of document trees. To be able to do that, the characteristics commutative and associative are required. And you know, Q meets these requirements. So I decided to select Q as a configuration language for this network provisioning system. And you know, also GetOps is a key concept of this network provisioning system. And I've implemented this feature using Flux CD source controller. And as for other fundamental requirements of the network provision system, we need a feature like transaction of distributed network devices and support of merge vendor merge version devices. And I've implemented these features as a Kubernetes custom operator and I selected Cube Builder to implement Kubernetes custom operators. I've implemented several custom operators for this network provision system. It was really helpful for me, and I could focus on the core logic of the custom operator. This is overall design of this new network provision system I've implemented. But uh, this diagram is a bit too busy to explain, so I will explain the details in parts. This is API server. When it receives intent-based northbound API requests, it compares the high-level model data to the low-level actual device config by evaluating queue configuration. Users of the system have to write the data mapper to map high-level model data to low-level device config using QRAG, and it's very easy due to Q's high programmability. 
During the config comparison, Q performs the type validation and even policy check in the case that you write policy enforcement logic in data mapper. The API server exposes this GNM API to the northbound, so operator or northbound application can deal with this system through GNMI. In order to generate the entire device config document from the multiple northbound requests, it performs the composite of multiple compiled device configs. This composition is achieved by using Q's characteristics that is commutative and associative. The comparison results are sent to the Git manifest repository. The comparison result includes entire network device configuration so that this manifest repository is single source of tools. So we can perform rollback the entire network configuration by only running Git checkout. And we can also get the entire device config from Git repository without invoking show command on the network devices directory. As for shear testing, we can perform shear tests with the entire actual device config. And we can also run static analysis like type validation and policy check which improves the testing quality. In this Kubernetes cluster, Flux CD source controller, device rollout operator, and device driver operators of each vendor on the each version are installed in advance. When pre-request to merge, Flux CD source controller detects the configuration update and pulls the latest configuration to the cluster. Flux CD source controller updates the corresponding device loader to custom resource, then the configuration update transaction starts. Device loader controller is responsible for transaction management. It acts as a commander of the transaction of distributed network devices. So if any device provision is failed, all devices will roll back to the previous state. All device drivers are to be implemented as Kubernetes custom operator. So you can easily extend to support multi-vendor and multi-version devices by implementing device drivers as Kubernetes custom operator. As for secret, since this network provisioning system uses Kubernetes cluster as its infrastructure, it can use Kubernetes secret resources to store the device secrets. As you know, there are some great open sources like external secrets operator and secret store CSA driver. We can easily integrate with secret manager services of public cloud. The secret manager integration is still in the conceptual stage. It is future work. So after all, by integrating all components I've introduced to you, we can make up the new network provision system like this. The new network provision system platform is already prepared, but in order to use this system, we need to create the device driver custom operator and the Q type definition for type validation. If the provisioning target device supports open config style young module, and you want to configure the devices by open config model, you can use the open source Y got, which means the young centric go tools provided from the open config community. By using Y got, you can generate the go struct from young module, and also you can generate Q type definition from the go struct 
by performing QGET command. You can use the Go struct in order to implement the device driver custom operator and the queue type definitions to implement the mapping logic from northbound to southbound device config inside the API server. As I mentioned, we can get lots of benefits from open config and why got regarding device driver and mapping logic implementation. But if you want to configure any other network devices, which do not support Yang and open config, we have to seek another way to generate them. It's also future work. Okay, so I'll show you demonstration of this network provisioning system. So let's move on to the demonstration. I'll show you the simple demonstration that the network provisioning system configures two open config based GNM emulator. All network provisioning components are installed in the single Kubernetes cluster, so you can see all active containers by running get deployment. There are seven deployments. This is API server, and this is named the network control as the tentative name of this application, and the flux GD source control, and the Kubernetes custom controller for device rollout resource, and the custom controller as well for the device driver and two GNMFX servers for the demonstration. You can also check the custom resource definitions like this. There are device lower to custom resource definition and the one for the open config demo device driver and the flux shd get repository custom resource is installed as well. There's one flux CD get repository resource named network CD test data, and it is addressed to this testing git repository. And there's also one device rollout to custom resource that is named the same as flux CD source controller. Its current provision state is healthy, which means that the provision transaction has been completed successfully. And the two open config custom resources are installed as the device driver in order to configure the emulators. And these open config demo custom resources are registered to the device rollout resource. And in this manifest, there are two devices open config 01 and open config 02. And some data to manage merge device transaction is also stored at this manifest. So let's try to call northbound API and configure the fake devices. First, let me introduce the data mapping logic to convert the intent-based northbound service model to the southbound device model written in queue. This is data mapping implementation logic and there are two fields input and template. And in this input field, there is a type definition and the nose burned interface is exposed using this schema. In the template field, the main mapping logic is written. It is an input and output field, and the output field stores the key value pair. The key is the device name, and the bar is the device config that should be configured to each device. This is just a conceptual demonstration and the use case in the configuration is also fake. Only VRAN sub-interface and the VRAN definitions are provisioned. And you can configure using this interface and mapping logic from the northbound API by setting this request payload, which means the defined input interface. For the demonstration, let me set port forward to the API server and also set what to the device over to custom resource to show the update of its transaction state. Okay. I want to set VRAN 999 in this demonstration. So let me check there is no existing configuration of VRAN 999. You can get the entire device configuration by using GNM client like this. And also check that no existing configuration by grab. 
Okay, fine. And so everything is prepared. Let me send the set request to the northbound API of the API server. There are no errors. And API server make git commit and push it to the git repository. Then device order to custom resource receives the changes and conduct the transaction management and the changes to the running state. It changes to the running state and the transaction is completed. Okay. So let me check whether the VRA 999 configuration is configured. Fine. The device config that is generated by evaluating mapping template routine by Q is provisioned to the average successfully. And if you go to the Git repository, we can find the commit, which has the same Git revision. And we are nine and nine open config service service model is configured. Then two device config generated from the northbound service model is also added. And you can see the detail what is provisioned to the devices from the GitHub console or by conducting Git diff. That is the end of this demonstration. Okay, so let me check whether the requirements are satisfied by this network provisioning system. Leveraging QRAN, we got great programmability and testability compared to text templating. In addition, Q's characteristics, commutative and associative, gave us the ability to perform composite of multiple partial document trees. As a result, it enables us to create a high-level abstraction model and expose CRUD interface. All these requirements are satisfied by adopting QRA. As for GitOps and other requirements, fundamental requirements like single source of tools, pool-based approach, multiple device transaction are satisfied by adapting Flux GD and insert Kubernetes custom operator. But there are some remaining future works like secret manager integration and test with actual network devices. So now we are planning to perform an integration test with actual devices. At first, we are trying to do some field trial with transport white box transponders using open config GNMI. And as you can see, we need to conduct much more integration test cases with actual network devices to improve the quality of this system. And also we'd like to release this network provision system as an open source, so we are actively developing missing features. Now, the system is just a POC quality, so we have to take much effort. These are the takeaways from my presentation. First, I've developed a new network provision system leveraging some cloud native open source technologies and Kubernetes. And the Kubernetes operator pattern is well designed for automation. It is really helpful to manage even external resources and can be applied even for the network configuration. And finally, Q is a great language that has the potential to be a game changer and we might be able to change our network provisioning operation drastically by integrating Q. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.